Hey, come on. Yeah. No, you're not. What? <laughs> How did you did, Mace? Yeah, um, not so bad. I checked some shit off my list today. Nice. Um, uh, let me see here. Everything should be up to date on our YouTube channel. <laughs> and I found two things. Okay, so I thought I edited the PB and J the other day. Yeah, I got, I got that new text. Yeah, but I didn't. I didn't I'm like this. It didn't yeah. save. It didn't take. So we were on there fucking smoking joints and shit. <laughs> and um, after Dan, we smoked a joint too. And that one didn't get edited properly either. So I, I think that one thing, like this didn't happen last night either. I have to. I think I have to push the start web webinar button or something. So it makes a cut. And so, unfortunately, like all this shit we're recording right now is pointless because it doesn't gotcha. save it. I got gotcha. you. So we'll have to, I'll do, I'll have to do a little digging and figure out how that, because I think some of that shit's good to keep. Yeah. And the two that, yeah. the ones that I edited down, I was able to keep the long version of those two shows, of those shows. So, so we do have mm -hmm. that. And um, well, I think the the Gimli and the PB and J we need to. Oh, they're done. It's edited and it's back up. Oh wow! Look at you. As if it, as if it wasn't um, NSFW. Well, clipping the shit off the end of those isn't that hard, but it takes a fucking while for it to back to upload back up. Mm. And so um, it was a little bit of a pain, but. It wasn't horrible. But yeah, we can definitely um that fucking that PB and J show is like three and a half hours long, dude. I know, I know. A long version. <laughs> like Jay got I didn't even realize that Jay got kicked off out to the porch and shit. <laughs> Yeah, you were. You, we were both. Well, I saw that, but you were. We were just humming along. Oh, we were fucking drunk. Yeah. And I was fucking yeah. smoking joints left and right and shit. <laughs> That's a Christmas special. Especially at the, towards the end. <laughs> there was at least two five f bombs and three sentences. <laughs> you know. Oh yeah, the whole fucking John Morton story. I I think that should be a yearly thing, dude. The we Christmas just get special. fucking torqued and fucking let it all hang out. Yeah, I got a problem with it. I mean, that doesn't necessarily need to go. We just we edit what we can out of it, but just the experience of it, and just let it all be live. Yeah, for them that want. Yeah. Dude, Timmy was right about that defense in Vegas. I don't know how fucking I don't know how Florida's gonna get through it. The Florida's got like three guys that are over six one and then three guys that are six one. The shortest guy on the Vegas defense is six one. So it's going to be defense versus goaltender. Well, okay. So here's another cool fact. If Bob sweeps right now, he will have a winning record by one game. But he has to win the four games. He has to win it out. I I mean, like when I said mm -hmm. that shit earlier, I, I thought for sure he would lose one or two games along the way. Mm -hmm. That motherfucker's pretty been, been pretty close to undefeated ever since. And so... I don't think that. I mean, I think they're going to take a loss tomorrow night for sure. 
regardless of what happens in that series. But that rest, that's too many. That 10 days off, dude, I can't believe that the league's going this late. 10 days? Is that what they had? Yeah, they've had 10. They'll all have 10, have had 10 days off. Jesus. After the sweep. And, is um, that how fast the time has gone? Oh, fuck, boys. That's not even tomorrow. It's the day after tomorrow. I know. Saturday, well, Saturday night. Come on. Hockey night in Canada. Oh, yeah. I know. I know. You invented it. Get your notebook out. I can't believe. I'm going to take these dishes to the sink real quick. I'll be right back. I can't believe I got that wrong about Julie or um, Rebecca as the psychiatric nurse practitioner. Nice. That was a good one, dude. I mean, that, that's, yeah, like, that's right there. Like, First of all, she's working for the CASA. What is that? Court-appointed special advocate for children. It just, And then she's like big into, you know, She's got a kid who's who's in the army. I I I don't know. I just wow. I hate that. I hate having that egg on my face. Hey, roll that back. I didn't hear any of it. Roll that back. I didn't hear any of it. That whole Rebecca Duffy mix up in identity. Working That's for the stuff. Working for but the VA. It, it makes sense. I mean, you're like, yeah, hmm, yeah, okay. She could be, yeah, I could see her working for the VA. No, but like, she's got a, a son who's in the army. She's all about army proud and, you know, and about veterans. And, and she's posted on, thank you to our veterans for their sacrifice. She for posted sure. that on her, on her face or her Instagram. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I, uh, I hate, I hate having the egg on my face for that. Ah, don't worry about but it. I know. No, I know, but it's still, it's just something. So um, when we get to Harold, I think it's probably best to leave your, like in the script that I put together, I'll just leave your sections blank because you're going to know, I can't, for someone neither of us know, it's easier enough for me to pitch you a couple of questions, but you know Harold for decades. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I won't be able to ask any better questions than you'll be able to ask. Well, but we can talk about that too, though. I mean, and maybe, you know, maybe this is, uh, maybe this is the, this is the time where we get ahead. You know, mm -hmm. we, maybe we take a little bit of time next week. I mean, I could figure out some time, you know, to, to spend on the phone with you next week and we could kind of talk that out, you know, and, and um, I mean, I'll be definitely on a different path, but I, I'm sure I could find an hour in there or something somewhere. And Absolutely. and then and then and then we could have a we could be up ahead of, ahead of the game a little bit, and then be looking at the following week and and uh and just keep going like that. And then you know, and then that would even give us time. If we get on a time frame like that, then that'd give us time to ask questions of those people too before, you know, like holy fuck, it's not the last minute yet. And hey, don't kid yourself. I know how to work on that. I know how to work on that fucking uh, game plan too. That's how I lived all my life, pretty well. Dubas yeah, hired as Penguins president. Huh? Dubas is the Penguins president. Damn, dude. Huh. Yeah, for from taking a fucking year off to being the president. We got um, tree living. Tree living. I don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah, that. tree living. Tree living. That's what I heard. How I heard somebody fucking pronounce it. It's definitely not easy. Bobrovsky's first cup final. Wow, Good for dude, him. he hasn't done shit, man. He's got a fucking losing record. I'm like this, twenty eight and thirty one right now. But yet, yeah. win one Vezina and make ten million a year. When like almost no other goalie is like who else is making that kind of money? He better win a fucking cup. Like he owes he owes Florida a cup at this point. Even with a fucking losing record. Okay, here we are. Wait. Oh, there we go. Panthers. Okay. Panthers. They lost the first game three to one. 
the group of six. And they won six to three. And they lost four to two. To Boston? Boston. And they were down six to two. They lost game four. And then they grinded out and they went in overtime four three, seven five, and then four three in overtime. Ah, there he is. This guy. Hello, hello. That's twins jersey. Yeah. yeah. So I wore it about a month ago, but now it's June first. Summer's here, so let's right. go Twinkies. Yeah. What's right, the weather right. like there right now? Is it good weather for you guys? You know what? It's kind of funny. When we first started doing this show a month and a half ago, six weeks ago, we saw snow on the ground, frozen ground, and today it's ninety-two and humidity over seventy or a dew point over seventy, and just horrible. So there's no in between in Minnesota. Oh. I know, dude. I we're at eighty six only. We haven't cracked. We've only cracked ninety a couple times this year. It's crazy. And I think we're going to be dry tomorrow. And then there's like three or four days of, that are like forty nine percent chance of rain every day, which is wow. really weird. So I mean, like, I'm probably going to be summer when I come back. I'm going to Detroit Tuesday for the glass conference, and um, it'll probably be like gates of hell when I get home. Come off oh, the can always use the rain. You might It'll be, be the opposite of flying to Mini in January or Toronto in January, where you're like, <laughs> where's my jacket? You know, when you get off the like as soon as you leave the plane and get on the jetway, you're like, fuck. And it's I gonna know. be like that, except the opposite down here, I'm sure. I bet you January in Minnesota in the Twin Cities is way worse than January in Toronto. Just stands down. It it very well should and could be so yes i will say that it probably is yes hey so Jimmy, I, last night we were talking we had the show we had um rebecca duffy on and, and after the show mace and i were just yammering around and we we're you know of course we always reminisce about things and so we started getting onto the 95 fan worlds and i we have two different entry points today but of course, I go to the to the PDJ website and refresh my memory that yes, of course, you would champ that year. Now, I remember playing that with both of us played, and I remember. And I don't know if Mace Man remembers this, but you played it. So please, either correct my me or set the official record. But I seem to recall. I think it was in the either the last round or the regular rounds or the semis. You had a disc in your bag that was unmarked. Correct. And it was like discovered six holes in or something like that. And you got a stroke for each hole that you had it in your bag up to that point in that round. Correct. And you still won the M World by like nine strokes. Correct. So yeah. <laughs> I, I will make the story quick and short. I'm not going to name names on who called me out on whatnot, but I had put a brand new oh, disc in my bag. It's not, we're not live. So if you want to name names, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it really doesn't matter. But the guy who did tell me on it went from like third to like 13th. So it was just bad karma on his spot. But, because he intentionally waited. The, and actually, if my memory serves me right, the PDJ changed the rule because of what happened to me. The dude could have waited till the 18th hole when I would have got 18 strokes. Instead, he waited four holes, so I got a four-stroke pen. So I was up by 10, oh, it went God. down to six, and then after the round was over, I was back up by 10. So, it, it you know, I, I, I you know, resonated through it right. or whatever, how you want to put it, and uh, it was a crazy situation. I was a 19-year-old kid. It was my first PDJ event, you know, the World Championships, my wow. first PDJ event. Your first and, ever uh, event? Are you serious? Yeah, and and this is back when you know, it was all you know D and DX plastic, so it was a 180 RAM, and I was a forehand thrower. I mean, like 30 percent of the time, I'm I'm a primary backhand, but I was throwing forehand, just ripping a 180 RAM, just hyzer, hyzer, hyzer. Mm -hmm. And and if you guys remember, those courses had some pavement and blacktop, so it was getting scuffed up. So I, I put a freshie in the bag, and I forgot to put my name on it before the round, and homeboy saw it in my bag before we started. And then waited four holes, and that's when he called me on it. And here's the best, and I wanted to bring this up when we had uh, uh, Brad Schick on the show, because Brent Hambrick was the number one guy at back at Tournament Central fighting for me. He's like, no, look at the unique 180 grams on this RAM is a unique marking. That's unique enough. 
you can't stroke him for that. And Brent Hamrick was totally fighting for me. And it's, wow. you know, I'll always have a warm spot in my heart because that, that, that guy was like, that's totally bullshit, Dan. Yeah. Holy cow. That's I mean, a great oh, story. And I get why you have to have your name on, on your disc and whatnot. And, I, you know, I was young and naive and dumb. And I just put it in my bag. And it was a dumb mistake. But it's just the, the situation where he could have waited 18 holes and just ruined, I mean, ruined the whole tournament for everyone. I mean, really, I'm leading all week long, and then really you stroke someone. So at least he only waited four holes, but he strategically waited four holes because I never threw the disc on hole one, two, three, or even four. So like I said, he saw me in warm-ups with that disc and saw I had no markings on it. So it was a bogus deal. And That's pretty crazy. I mean, that's – so so that rule reads that if it was in your bag and unmarked, or is it – I always thought that it was like if you used an unmarked disc. But that's the thing is that the rule has changed since then. Yeah. At the time when it happened, it was every stroke that an unmarked disc is unmarked in your bag, you get a stroke per hole. And the next year is when I, I'm, I'm almost positive that's how it went down. It's how it's in my head. Um, and is that the next year they wound up changing it because it just it, that's so unfair. I mean, you know. yeah, see, I, I vaguely remember that. You know, I mean, it's <clears> I had another guy pop up this week on, on Facebook and go, hey, you remember me from 25 years ago? And I was like, uh, no. Tell me a little. Tell me a couple stories. You know, your name's not ringing the bell. So anyway, you know, it would it would almost be worth talking to Chuck Kennedy just for clarification on how that rule change came into effect. Almost. No, it wouldn't. <laughs> I'm kidding. That's I'm kidding. okay. I'm me kidding. and Chuck go way back. We've always butted heads and whatnot. But I love the guy. He's I, he, I, he's I a staple. A long time too. Yeah. yeah, he's a good guy. Don't get me wrong. Absolutely. But uh, I just uh, that's now. Do you remember what course that was? Did that I was definitely it was at Mount Airy. Okay. Uh, yep, which is like still one of my top five favorite courses ever. And I yeah, can't I can only imagine yeah. what they I can only imagine what Freddie and the boys have done to it since nineteen ninety five. Because even in nineteen ninety five it was just unbelievable. Yeah, so, they've added some stuff. I mean, I've I've played it a couple a few times since and it's definitely grown some more teeth in some other areas, but it's still just like I mean like I think back to that and think about okay well that was that was more than 10 years old back then and yeah. it's still i'm i'm sure that it still would put a whooping on a on a person you know especially an old yep. part like me <laughs> lots of hills and beautiful trees and oh, beautiful man. grass and oh man i just i just remember that one hole and i can't remember what number it was but it played kind of down like a terrace level down and the, oh the, yeah the, the round all fit, fell away and there was Thick, thick, rough all on the oh, yeah. side. Oh, yep. You had to throw a cyclone weird. way out left, and the hyzer flip and fade and fade and fade and fade. That was one of the cyclones, one of the best. Cyclone. Just hyzer flip, long distance drivers, man. It's interesting, was, you know, when you look at the at the story of, especially back then when it was really just the two companies. I mean, Lightning didn't really factor in much at all, and DGA. I don't think they even had their their feet on the ground with that. But you know, a this light Innova comes out with the beveled edge and then in a discraft comes out with the cyclone plastic and just the cyclone mold. And then Innova's got, you know what I mean? It's like, a, it was a one-upmanship that kept pushing the sport forward, especially with this technology. Hey, and there were certain high watermarks. Like the cyclone. pause that for one second and let me go live because this is stuff that we don't want to throw away. Honestly. <laughs> oh boy. You know well, I, mean? I hope you guys have me on sometime. I'd love to say months down the road where we can just talk disc golf. Cause I'm yeah. a pretty good story. I got a lot of stories, just like we yeah, all. Yeah, for sure, dude. We'll get yeah. you in there. We'll... All, right, all right, we're going to go live, and then we're going to talk. We're just going to keep on rambling, okay? But let me get this on. No, no, let's just let's stay tight on the on the, on the the show focus. We'll, well, we we'll can talk about here. golf, too, dude. I mean, I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah. But, yeah, we can jump right in there. If you want to finish that. And since all three of our teams are out. Yeah, yeah we, this will be the wound looking episode right here. Let, let, let's just get rid of the heartbreak first and then, then go back to the fun stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're live. All right. All right, well, welcome back to the Good Times Hour NHL Playoff Picks Edition. We're joined with our very special guest and old time friend of the show, Jimmy Gill. Way to go. Thank you. Thank Jimmy. you for having me, guys. Yeah, He's yeah. Sure, the man. summer Thanks for uniform. Us. Very good. Like so Jack let, didn't even respond to the text message today. So I mean, it's just oh, the three okay. of us. So we can just like we can make him take the odd spot or whatever. And just uh, I'll, I'll I'll bring us up to speed where we are, and I'll just go through the rounds. 
first round was the biggest amount of points uh, got. Uh, I, I got 13, Mace got nine, Timmy five, Jack one. The only point Jack got was for calling Edmonton over the Kings. Um, and, you know, that feels like so long ago now. Round two. It does. Uh, Timmy took round two with three points. Mace two, B one, Jack one. Uh, round two was Jack got his points by calling Dallas. I got my point by calling Dallas. Mace got his points by calling Dallas and Carolina. Timmy, you called Dallas in seven. And that was, that's a tough one, but you did it. I know it's it's tough to cheer for the enemy. I had to do that for the third round. Um, so in the third round in the East, Timmy and I, we called Florida. We both called it in six. Who would have known it would have been a sweep? Oh, we'll get to that later. Um, and Timmy, you also got points for calling Vegas uh, over Dallas. So third round, Timmy gets two, I get one. So the total after three rounds, I've got 15. Mace is holding on a second with 11. Timmy's got 10. And Jack is rounding up the bottom with two points. <laughs> well, it's so, too bad Jack never felt like joining us. He's definitely lively, and he would have been fun to have on. But, um, hey, you know, I mean, it's still a race. Would you say you have? How many points you got, Paul? I got 15. Um, oh, and you have 11, and Timmy's got 10. So it's out of reach. Are you putting notes in your notebook right now? Is that what's going I, on over there? I've got, I've got, it's not in my notebook, but there's not yet. sheets from an old notebook. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's just, uh, first of all, do we want to talk about the first three rounds? Do we want to talk about that third round? Well, we can. No matter. So yeah, it, I mean, me, I think we started off like when my wild got bumped out. I had to kind of bite the bullet and kind of go okay. first. I think okay. so, Mace. And I'm you know, that. Yeah, holy think... cow, man! Your team fought back, dude, and I was rooting for you. I was rooting for your squad, man. And I was watching your post, and you're trying to get rid of your extra ticket and stuff. And you had belief, and that's awesome. It's awesome that you had that belief. And man, the fact that they got a couple that was so exciting. It just made hockey and playoffs what they are so it, it was fun to watch i was feeling your pain man well and you know and it's yeah. it, you hear you hear him say it all the time um whether it's a coach or whether it's a commentator or whatever um they you know it, it comes down it comes down a little mistakes in the conference finals and you know you can look directly at game two and Studer dumping that pass behind the net just with you know two stars players that and one of them wasn't engaged with one of the three vegas players and it was just like, oh, pass, pass, shot. Oh, we're tied now. Now we're going to overtime. And that that game, they played way better than that. You know, I mean, shit happens, obviously. But, you know, if he holds that pass, and, and even if he just holds that pass, they probably get out of there. You know, mm -hmm. it, if, if, even if they get the puck from him again and take some more shots, probably a lot better chance than just leaving, I think it was Stone that they had in the middle. Or no, maybe it wasn't him. But either way. I mean, Eichel was the middle pass, world class behind the back. I mean, you got I got to give credit, but man, it was a tough one. It was a really tough one. That would have made a difference to go to game seven like that, though. I mean, if, if we'd have won that game and lost three. And I can't make any excuses for, for Jamie Ben falling on that dude's neck. Oh. Jesus. I mean, come on, bro. I mean, yeah. hey, yeah, man. A good play to lose your mind sometimes. Boy, you know, what's really funny is, um, I mean, I don't know exactly which city it's located in, but the fair, the capital, the fair weather capital of the world is definitely within a few miles of here. And it's um, so much of the cow cowboy mentality came into this. Like when, when that happened, people are like, they should strip a C. And I was like, you don't watch hockey. Like you should shut up. I can tell already that you don't watch hockey. So don't don't act like you have an opportunity to pass judgment here because you know you don't know what you're talking about and and like that I mean I'm not saying that that was excusable because it's not but they're never yeah. stripped the sea off of a guy like that for something like that for one transgression I mean I think he had one other suspension in his career right. and like a but, couple of fines but Amazing. for a captain to do it to, to the other team's captain kind of made it extra bad. Yeah, and I mean, I, I and also the playoffs wonder, too. That's... There has to be some bad blood. There has to be something else to do that. I mean, that was a minute fifty-four in. Yeah, that's crazy. 
first shift, that, self-admitted. So, so was the vibe down there that the NHL didn't treat it right that he shouldn't have got the second game? Uh, or... No, I don't know. Honestly, I don't. I don't. I wasn't surprised at that. I mean, those. Um, you know, I actually, I imagine that some of the people that aren't hockey fans maybe were worried that he was going to get more. You know, I thought it would be one or two. Right. And and that's where it came down. And, you know, I don't think that, um, man, dude, they played, they played their asses off. And I'm not going to bullshit you. I mean, I yell a lot at these games. It's not, a, it's not bullshit. And I didn't. I was trying hard to dig deep just to make some noise for the team, and and I I was I was drained too. You know, I mean, it was I I felt that whole exhilaration and that lasts for two or three days from a playoff win and from a series win. You know, as a fan, you know, not as a player, and that's one of the reasons why I uh, you know I loved it. That's one of the reasons why I wanted you to be involved, Timmy, because I know you've experienced that as a player, even at whatever level you played at. You played. I didn't play. I know that I'd have broke, done some permanent damage to myself if I had played. And, yeah. and that, uh, you know, unless I just got lucky and made it through somewhere, but I'd have had a lot of fun trying, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Well, a lot of that is the same thing in disc golf too. If you're not out there trying, I think Uli just had a really good post on Facebook. He's like, don't ever quit. Just yeah. get out there and play because you never That's know when that too. next good win can happen to you. You know, it's like, you just keep plugging away, keep plugging away, you know, so... Yeah. It's the same kind of deal being a fan. Yeah. And what do you guys think about the the East? I mean, that was I don't think Shocking. none of us called anywhere near that. We said we called six and seven games. And the fact that the Brooms came out that quickly, wow. I mean, the first game going four overtimes. <laughs> what was the sixth longest game in NHL history? Is that what it was? Something like that, yeah, yeah. I think you're right there in the neighborhood. They kept on putting things up on the screen. Okay, this just now became the fifth. This just became the fourth. You know, whatever. However, it broke down. I mean, it was interesting. Definitely a seminal game. Shows a lot of character. Mason and I have been talking about Bobrovsky, and you know, is this? Do we do we even look for those those teams of destiny, or this is like the faded kind of path, or whatever? Or is it just that uh, this is sports and momentum happens and whatever? But, I mean, you can read all those kind of storylines in this approach. And Florida, uh, I was just looking at a report this morning on Toronto Media. And the only other 16th seed team to come and get this way to the Stanley Cup Finals was the LA Kings. And they yep. won the Cup, I think that was 2012, 12, 2013. 12 or 13, <laughs> for sure. So, like, yeah, and they were, they were the there. same. They were exactly in the same spot. They had the least amount of points of they were number 16. Yeah. Coming in the door. And, and I mean, okay. And so I'm going to throw my, I did a little homework today too, Timmy. Uh, yeah. I'm looking at my homework. Yep. And uh, <laughs> uh, I didn't do as much as you probably, but no, um, no. But, anyways, one of the things I did a little, I looked back on, on Bob's playoff record and he's still, if he, if he sweeps, if they sweep, then he's going to have a, a, a one game over 500 playoff record. And, Unreal. and, and, you know, and yeah, I mean, seriously, he's making $10 million a year and it's based on a Vezina season, not on a postseason. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so, Hey, but I mean, I can talk all the shit I want and I can throw a rock as far as I can, but if I don't, I don't think there's any chance that they're going to get a sweep. I don't, I don't think this is going to any chance. This is going to be over in less than six games personally. But I mean, I, I didn't think – I thought it was going seven over there in the East last time, and I was right. way wrong about that. Holy cow. The question is, is Vegas going to be much tougher than Carolina? And that's – Well – You throw that up there for the A's. If you go back right to there. Timmy's – Timmy's, I did a little homework on backing up Timmy's talk last time about the defense, and hmm. check this out. That's a good the, point. There's three guys – there's three defenders of, of the entire decor – for Florida that are six three or six four. There's three defenders that are six one, and then everybody else on their entire roster for defense is under six feet one. And Vegas's shortest person is six feet one. So what you said, I don't know if you went that far into it, but they're they're big. Um I didn't go that far into it, but I, I knew that as a 
umbrella like, like overhaul yes I, I know that they're big dudes and it makes the only reason i mean they're on their fourth or fifth string goalie how do you think he's doing so well it's because those yeah, big oh, d-men yeah. are just they're blocking shots they're getting in the way they're shutting down the lanes they're going in the corners they're coming out with the puck and they've got so many deep forward lines that they're just a dangerous dangerous team well i'll, I'll get more into that on my turn but yeah man it, it's crazy it, it's <laughs> Well, why don't we? It's gonna be a very right interesting right, series. Segue right into there. You, you go, go with it. Let's just start start into it. You got your notes. You're ready to go. I think it's exciting. All right, I'll kind of fire away on my yeah. notes. Sorry if I look down and cheat a few times, That's but I mean, here, here's yeah. the number one. Here's, here's kind of the number one stat that was like on all the different blogs and all the different stuff out there. The road teams are 38 and 26. Wow, That's crazy. So, you can just take out whatever home ice that, that it really doesn't matter. It's playoff hockey. So it comes down to the goalies and the defensemen. I know I started off our segment two months ago by saying that the stars are going to rise, not the Dallas stars, but the stars of the teams and the stars of the league are going to shine. Obviously we got a couple that will, there's no way we're not going to talk about to Chuck and whatever, but, um, and even Eichel. Um, but what happened, with Bob, at, as you call him, as everyone calls him by his nickname, Bobrovsky, if that's the right way to pronounce it. Um, I'm going to go through real quick the Con Smythe, the MVP of the playoff winners the last four years. Cam McCarr, defenseman. Before that, Vasilevsky, goalie. Here before that, Hedman, defenseman. Here before that, hate to say it, there be, but Ryan O'Reilly, a former Maple Leaf, was a defenseman. So the last four Con Smites have gone to defensive players. There's something to be said about that. And then you go before that, obviously you got Ovechkin and Sid the Kid, and then you got the guys from the Blackhawks. We don't need to talk about the Tays and Payne and those clowns. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I say that because Jack's not listening. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but for the last four, the best players, the whole MVPs are defensive type players. So I think Bobrovsky is going to be tough to beat in this in this playoff series, man. It's scary. It, it really is scary. I, oh boy. So I'm I'm kind of going that way. I'm, I'll give you my in games or who the who's going to win the series totally. But that that's a big thing when I look at those kind of stats. Yeah, it's definitely that's definitely understandable. What do you think about the rust factor, though? I mean, I don't see there's any way that they're going to win that first game. I mean, they're ten days off. That's a long. That's a long break in your rhythm. It is for sure, but at the same time, I mean, they're blocking all those shots. You're taking all those dings and nicks. You know, in the shins, the ankles, wherever you're taking all those dings, all those are now gone. So they're skating fresh. You know, they've been out there doing their morning skates and all that stuff they're not getting rusty they're 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 as fired up as ever so god it's gonna be fun to watch i'm gonna be locked in yeah i am too anzer said in his exit interview that he wouldn't be watching oh, it's stanley cup goes, finals i mean no yeah but yep yeah, nope and that was it it was like five words in between or three <laughs> words in between he was like yeah, yeah, yeah no and then just moved right on to the next question that's funny that's awesome so what do you what's what do you think? What do you, what do you want to call between the two teams? I know you think as far crazy. as the series goes. Yeah, it's my final answer. Um, final answer. I'm gonna say Bravosky in six. I'm putting Bob in six. You know, I mean, when you look at momentum, when you look at at the fact that. Usually the second season is all about the defensive. And this this second season so far has been really unpredictable because we've had some pretty big scoring games. Crazy unpredictable. And that's, yeah. I mean, whether it's an 8-4 or 7-2 or 6 nothing, there's usually it's 2-1, to 3-1, 4-3, to one, four to three, you know, it tops. Uh, and that's kind of a bit of a shootout. So I think that really goes to what you're saying about the, the previous MVPs being defensive minded and from the back end. And I, I clearly recall the year that Jaguar won the the uh, the Conn Smythe and how disappointed he was when the, the Ducks lost. But he 2003, won, right? Uh, and then of course Toronto soaked him. We we signed him to a, a nice <laughs> sweet contract after that and let him play out his donut years here. But uh, 
I, I think that Bobrovsky, I know that Mace was really, you know, put, pointing out that he's got a losing record. Another little quick point uh, here, when Jay and Dan were doing TSN, um, Dan O'Toole and Jay on right, they moved to the States for a while to do ESPN. They came back to, to Canada. And Jay Onright is a funny, funny guy. And one of the things, anytime he would say Bobrovsky, I don't know why he did this, but he would always say, because they always try to link players like, you know, heir to the O. Henry fortune or whatever. And he would always say about Bobrovsky, you're the smartest cop on the force, Bobrovsky. And I don't know, <laughs> I, I don't know where he was going with this or why this was so funny, but I always laughed. And so I thought, you know, if ever I can ride on those coattails, I'm calling Bobrovsky as well. And I'm going to be re revolution and probably throw it all, all away, but I'm saying in five. Wow. Because okay. I think this is a team of destiny. And what they did to Carolina is just, they're just, they're like fire ants. They're unstoppable. Interesting. Yeah. Right, Mace, let's hear what you got to say. Hey, well, I was just going to say, Oh. To Chuck, I mean, my God, what can you say? The guy is just unbelievable. He's I mean, on fire, too. I mean, obviously. Yeah. It's not. I mean, okay, we all know the clutch game winners and whatnot. But during the course of the game, he's still dominating, too. He's controlling the puck. He's just in charge of the whole game. So, when obviously, when it comes on a crunch time, he's going to win the game for you because he's in control of the game. The guy is just unbelievable. And the yeah, fact well, that they, they traded him to whatever goalie, and oh my god, I'm sorry, it was a Canadian team there, B. But oh, I know Calgary's kicking themselves <laughs> in their shins right now. Damn. <laughs> oh, well, he god. told them he did tell him he wasn't coming back. Like he was just going to hit the open market if they didn't trade him. So I mean, it was they kind of tied his hands. Oh, and man. and that, but you know, that's um, it's pretty what do you crazy. Expect from a Kachuk, though, honestly. Come on, I'm just saying. Oh. Yeah, he's unreal, man. He it's, is unreal, it, and it's. I mean, like you know, in all my little hockey circles with all my buddies, and we're texting back and forth. It's like, can you believe this guy? And we're all showing memes and highlights and all this stuff. It's like he did it again. He did it again. He did it again. Yeah, it's it. You know, brings back what I said goosebumps even like thinking about it. You know, <laughs> it's just it, it's exciting stuff, man. But you That's know, one what... of those one of those serious intangibles for for just for the regular season, but specifically for the postseason, is leadership. And someone like that that just goes out and he says it on the bench, he says it in the room, and then he does it on the ice. And you like every one of those guys that are on that bench will go through a wall for this guy. Yeah. And like I don't know. I mean, Vegas is scoring by committee. They're they're playing by committee, but Florida is just they're on a messianic path, as it were. You know. All yeah. right, Mace. All right. Well. I'm going against it. Okay. I think that I think that um well I just I, I think that I think that first game they're gonna lose for sure. I don't I mean that's just my opinion. I, I think that it's gonna be really tough to overcome that break. Uh I think that Vegas has got a little bit more rhythm going with them right now. And I think that it's really gonna be hard to get through all those big defenders, man. I mean that's you bring a I mean, good point with that's that. ultimately ultimately what did the stars in was not being able to get through those guys and get enough shots on them. Um, you know, and it's, we'll see what happens. I don't think, man, I, I kind of want to say seven games. I just don't know how, I think, I don't think it's going to be easy for either one of them to get through it. I don't think that, I, I think, I think that, um, I mean, it's possible that they'll win in five or six, but I really think it's going to be, I think they're going to trade games. I think I don't think that they're going to have an easy walk with it, but I don't think Vegas is either. You know. So you're saying Vegas in seven? Yep, that's what I'm saying. All right, lock it in. Maximum hockey for the rest of the summer. We're putting a zero for or a NA for Jack, and a thank you for participating one round to Robert. I didn't mention him. I guess I should have. He went uh, goose eggs. For his two picks but thanks for participating robert <laughs> florida was on fire man he had no shot well you know maybe, maybe we can get him in next year we'll get him in next year for sure i think i think we can do like a, a whole bracket thing for next year we can, well let's maybe... hope all three of our teams are in next year oh. so we're enthused and, and yeah for sure happens, without yeah, a doubt know.
without a doubt. And you I know, just, I think that I think all three of us have a good, a strong chance at that. You know, I mean, the uh, the only one of us that has any turmoil right now is Mr. B. But well, he got tree, a DM last night, so tree living. We got him. So I don't know. I think he was. I think he was in Calgary for like eight years. So it's not a bad I mean, sign. Calgary's made the playoffs. They've been a fairly strong team. They they got they had Kachuk before he became Chucky. So it's got to be something. tough. That market's got to be tough to work in, though. I mean, oh, to work and play from in, a GM sure. standpoint, you know, from yeah. a well, yeah, and obviously to play in too. But I mean, either one of those Western markets there. You know, I mean, it's an uphill battle with the dollar and everything. I mean, right. trying to keep up and, you know, I was thinking man, about people fill those buildings. Well, that's, that's the other thing is like the, the whatever it is now, the Scotiabank place or whatever it is. I, I don't know. I just think of it as, as uh, Air Canada Center, but it's always full regardless of what kind of product they put on the ice. When you look at other cities, a lot of other cities, the admission or the 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 you know the number of people in the seats rise and fall with the success of the team. And so Dallas great is a great example of that. But it made the great motivation to put a better product on the ice. With the Leafs, you could have, you know, Yelp one star reviews or five star players. It doesn't matter, like from the gate perspective. And that's really frustrating because we're just good enough to kind of keep the average fan watching, but not good enough to move on deep into the playoffs and be like a like a serious dynastic threat, which is my two cents. So many things working for and against you in that situation too. You know, I mean, like the the vice, the pressure that um, you know is that market from the media standpoint and from the fan standpoint and everybody like that. I mean, it's I've heard lots of players talk about it. Oh yeah, it's nice to be down here where there's no intention whatsoever. You know, I mean, like yeah. the coach. Our coach bitched about, you know, no, no special, very few special award votes, you know, like nothing for the, no consideration for uh, Johnston who scored as many goals as, um, as the leading guy for the uh, rookie of the year. I can't remember the guy from, was it Benners from, um, from Seattle? He scored the same number of goals. He didn't have near as many assists, but he doesn't even get a, get a consideration on the vote. And, and a lot of it's like when Hayskinen came up and, uh, he never got any votes either. And then like two years later, people are like going, how did I miss on him? And it's like, well, you don't pay attention to this market. That's how, you know I mean? Oh. Now, there's probably the least amount of press badges going out this week for, for a Stanley Cup in the last 50 <laughs> years, you know I mean? Yeah. Well, Canadian, Canadian media are loving it, or actually not loving it because it's just as warm here than it is down there. So they didn't want to go anywhere hotter. You know what I mean? <laughs> If they did the playoffs in March, holy crap, every Canadian media person would be flocking to Florida. Yeah. Vegas. So what would be more crazy be the Stanley Cup getting paraded down Main Street, Toronto, or the Stanley Cup going down the Vegas Strip? Let me just say, people in Vegas may party like it's 1999 because there's <laughs> something important. They, they tell them this is important. Right. But if the Leafs ever won, this city, the, the largest city in this nation, member of the G7, by the way, I just want to say that, would, would stop every, like when the, when the Raptors won four years ago, yeah. there were between one and 1. 1.5 million people like in downtown Toronto. On the for street. basketball. For basketball. For the <laughs> Leafs, holy God. I mean, buildings would top. It'd be like the it'd be like the Chiefs fans in Kansas City, proportionately. You oh, know what man. I mean? Like there were so many people trying to swarm into a just under a million person town. You know, like three hundred thousand people were trying to jam into a million person town. You know, for that celebration, and it'd be from a, from a proportionate standpoint. Obviously, it would be way bigger, but yeah, that'd just, be off just, the hook. I don't think that. In, I mean, I think Vegas would put a big put a big effort out there. But it wouldn't oh, yeah. be like Toronto. It no, wouldn't be like Toronto at all. It's all showmanship. I, I mean, at least well, I'm guessing, right. anyways. We right. so they have to you know have the cup out in the fountains of the Bellagio or whatever. Oh, that's cool. But right. now let's get it up in Toronto. No, that then you'll have you'll put it up on a podium and people will be worshiping it. They'll be just bending <laughs> down, you know, doing their prayers to the sunshine on that stuff. 
No, uh, so when they did the parade for the Raptors, um, they had the parade route all mapped out and everything, but they didn't have enough security to keep people back to where the, the parade route went out of the practice facility on a fairly straight route through the exhibition grounds. And then there's these, this, this arch, this ceremonial arch that was built in the 20s, 1924 or whatever. It's called the Prince's Gates, two princes, just like the song. Princes, this one, da, 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 da. anyways. And yeah. the crowd got so up jammed and they made the focus of the turn so tight that all of the tour buses that were holding the Raptors champion players on them were stuck under the broiling sun for like four hours because there was like 250,000 people at the, at the S turn right there. And the, and the buses couldn't actually make it. Pau Gasol almost fell off the bus because he was so hammered from champagne drinking hardcore in the sun. <laughs> it was one of the funniest things ever. Like the, the, this, the parade officially started at 10 and I was working that day. So I was getting off at lunch and I was going back home. I was checking the parade. Like, where are they now? 2.30, they were still where they started. Wow. <laughs> so if the Leafs ever win here, it's pandemonium. Oh. Yep, shut her down. Just I think I don't I don't think that there's enough. It might be a letdown. If you guys win the Eastern oh. Conference Finals and then like that might be bigger. That might be big because I mean if you think about what's going on right now. And you think about the way you guys got smacked out this last round, this last mm. playoff round, you know, um, if they, I mean, if they make it to, to the finals, commerce finals, and then get through, that's oh. going to be off the hook. <laughs> I think yeah. the number Or if they lose, you might yeah. be burning cars like Vancouver. Who knows? Oh. Yeah. Well, there were, there were people were dancing on police cars after each of the divisional or each win in the playoff basically well after the second round the second round was when i think that was against philadelphia that was the shot i don't know if you remember Kawhi leonard threw the shot up and it bounced rim boom boom and then went in and he was like down on a knee or down like squatting we were celebrating my wife's 50th birthday that night and when they the, that point actually sunk i thought immediately that i was like they're shooting they're shooting they're already shooting it was just fireworks going off, but you know, it was yeah, it was pandemonium for sure. That's so, awesome. Who knows if the Leafs ever win? Fuck. I haven't even it, before my lifetime. We haven't even got to the conference or the Stanley Cup Finals since '67. That's all I have to wow. say. Wow. That's all I'm gonna say. That's saying a lot for the Leafs. A story franchise like that that's saying a lot i mean i can talk about my vikings 0 for 4 in the bowls and whatever but when it comes to hockey it's a little more extreme if you ask me but yes but you know i mean you you know you know how it is oh yeah i mean it'd be the same thing but if the bikes yeah. ever win the bowl oh my god shut her down burn every house down in the whole state of minnesota <laughs> <laughs> oh, but what's such a lovely bright light it will be, though, eh? <laughs> Man, I'll tell you what. Just with the with the luck that I've had with you know the Chiefs getting Mahomes and everything, that it's really it's it makes all those shitty years really like just kind of fade away and then seem worth it, you know. Just thinking about because like that's really, I mean, that's what you're talking about is fiber of your fabric, you know. It's not, you know, like it's I've I've known people that have moved to other places and and. Um, and they switch their allegiances when they move to town for various reasons. And I'm like, no, 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 no. If you rooted for that team when you were a kid, I don't care where you live. You could live in Germany. That's still your team. You may pick up a team in that league over there, but you go back to your home league and that's your team. You know, I mean, yeah. we were all paying attention when you were standing up for them, when you were talking your shit to your, you know, your buddy who had the rival team or whatever. We all remember that. So, that, you know, that's your team, you know. And shit. The Royals, the Royals won the uh, World Series in 1985 when I was a senior in high school, and they didn't even go to the playoffs for 30 more years. 30 <laughs> straight years, okay? Like, no sniff of it next year, nothing. And, you know, I mean, and that's baseball, you know? I mean, I honestly, I think that baseball should expand their playoff schedule because there's lots of people that don't know anything about their baseball team being a winner. 
Yeah. Like ever in their whole entire life, like multiple teams, you know. And well, when you think they play 162 freaking games, and then only like four teams make the playoffs, it's like. Well, no, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't don't discount that one game wild card series. Oh, oh. I know, Sorry. Timmy. It's not a series if it's one game. I know. <laughs> hey, at this point, we're hoping for anything. Although my Twinkies, that's just, I have to represent 87 and 91 World Series championships. That's the only of the four major sports, the only team that we can really hang our hat on. And, not, and I'll add one more tidbit. I'm representing Burt Blylevin today. I was watching Sports Center the other day, and they were like, oh, it's the, I think they said, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a day to remember because Burt Blylevin is the only guy, and this is for us old guys, you guys will greatly appreciate that. He's the only guy to win over 20 games in his teens and his 40s. Wow. So you're saying there's a chance. That's badass, <laughs> man. Yeah, so Burt Blylevin, he made the <laughs> Hall of Fame eventually, and he was one of the game winners in the 87 World Series. Wow. I was I was old enough to remember it, and 91, of course, I was in high school. Holy cow. So, yeah, those are the two world championships that we have. I feel cool, like man. I feel like that both the 85 Kansas City uh, Worlds and 87 Twins Worlds, I feel like you had to go through Toronto to, on both of those occasions. I, like, mm-hmm. Toronto was, we had won our division, I think, multiple times in the mid to late 80s, and we That's had George possible. Bell. We had, oh, I can't even remember all the names. But I, I, I'd have to go back and look at the records. But we'll, we'll hear about this on the next show. There you go. <laughs> so let's um let's meet again after it's all after they you know give, give the Stanley Cup out and just uh do a quick recap. And again, we definitely want to have you on for your own full show. Yeah, without a doubt. Like we're uh, I mean, how are you willing to do something this summer? Because we're yeah, gonna start sure. laying out the schedule. We're gonna try to. I'm gonna. We're gonna try to schedule things up for the next X eight weeks. Yeah. And as we've been doing this, we've been, we've kind of been shooting for a target and just saying, okay, we're gonna try to get. We're gonna shoot for this week for you, and then we're gonna figure out what days available between the three of us because it, it it doesn't seem like it's that difficult to get together for an hour with three people in three different cities, but it's not the easiest thing to pull off. Right. No, I'm I'm totally down for whatever. I'm very flexible. Um, yeah, just let me know and just give me a couple of weeks ahead of time and then I start can kind of game plan because I need to try and figure out just what I really want to talk about because I have a lot to talk about. But as you know, Mace and, and B, all of us, we've been, we've been through the ringer. We've been through everything, the ups, the downs, the being sure. good, being yes. bad, business is good, business is bad, blah, blah, blah. I mean, there's a million different ways we can go with it, but yeah. For sure, man. I'm, I would love to do it. Cool. Yeah, it'd be great. And 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 again, it's been great having you on here because, you know, I mean, obviously you've got a, a different perspective. I mean, we're all three fans, but we're all three bringing different stuff to the table, too. So, um, and, and again, most Minnesotans are honorary Canadians anyway. So much. That is, that is correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's just like the southern area of team drinking, you know. <laughs> and it's not very southern, obviously. You know, yeah, you know, absolutely. Well, so, right on, guys. Thank you. I greatly appreciate me. you guys having me on. It's been a oh, lot man. of fun, and yeah, it'll be fun to wrap it up at the end of this deal. It's gonna be so fun to watch. Like I said, my goodness, it, yeah, it, it, it's, it's gonna go six or seven. I feel for sure, and the goalies are gonna be the standouts. They're gonna join all the guys that I named off earlier: Vasilevsky and oh god, and then you go back, Jonathan Quick. He was unbelievable. Yeah, he's for a, sure. And, and he's hurt and he's, for Vegas. He's I backing mean, up for Vegas, yeah. I mean, he's – and, yeah, you know what? I'll tell you, it's it, – I really hope that it's – I really hope that it's, like, seven one-goal games. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Let's, just, let's just – let's really – From a fan perspective. Yeah, I'm for sure. sure. You know, I mean, I don't give – honestly, I mean, yeah, it's it, – there's some bragging rights involved, but even if I – even if I get three points here, I'm still going to be one behind B. It, <laughs> so, I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, it, it – and and it's – Again, like I said earlier too, man, I really enjoyed spending time with both of you during this. Yeah, so that's it's, right. it's awesome. Thank I guess you. I haven't looked. Are they had they posted the uh, TV times? Because obviously Florida's <laughs> East Coast and obviously Vegas is West Coast. So 
Well, we know what time the games are going to be on. Shit, the, the West game Coast game. Is, first game it's like the Saturday Dallas and Wild eight. games starting off at 850. Yeah. Yeah, don't even get me started on that stupid crap. NHL.com is taking his time to load up, but I think I think so seven game o'clock, is Saturday. Seven central tomorrow or for Saturday. Okay. And then um Monday night's also seven central. Okay. And then there's a couple, there's like a two day uh they play again on the uh, fifth. Oh, wait a minute. No, no. Okay, so they play on the eighth, the fifth and the eighth. <clears throat> And that's a seven o'clock game. And then I don't have anything more on my uh, on my sports app. Hmm. But the eighth is uh, the eighth is Thursday next week. Right on. So there's no like nine thirty puck drop. Not that's, so far. That's all I'm asking. I, I got to so, be at yeah. work at six a.m. So right. I know it's tough to, especially if they start going into multiple overtimes. Oh geez. I mean, great for the fan perspective again, but. Man, what do you I think those Vegas work. fans think about a five o'clock game? Though I'd be pissed. I mean, I wouldn't be pissed if I—I I guess because I don't work. But I mean, no, nobody in Vegas knows what the hell hockey is. They just know from a betting perspective. That's it. They're like, oh, five o'clock. All right, let's just start our prime mid at four. All right, so I'm gonna throw another prediction out. Even if, even if Florida wins the cup, I'd predict by the. Middle of November, we're going to see more empty seats on TV than we're going to see full ones in their building. When we when we happen to catch televised games, I, I, even if they win the cup, I bet you that they don't even get halfway to Christmas yeah. before their before their attendance tanks. Yeah, that's that one. Yeah. Unless it's a weekend game now, but I mean, like on a Tuesday game, I mean, you I know could, how many could... people like so. Dallas sells out every game theoretically but not everybody uses those tickets you know the tickets are all paid for in one form or fashion for the most part i mean if you look on the Ticketmaster ticket exchange you see blue dots are the ones the team's selling red dots are people like <laughs> myself selling and you know it, all those red dots don't count as a not sold ticket because they were purchased at one point so you know i, I look at that i've watched it a lot this time because i pop, picked up an extra pair and i was trying to um parlay it into the regular season with what with the other sales that i did from the regular season this year and it there's a lot of i mean you, you can look on there and you see where the dots are and then you go look in those sections and you'll see seat backs you won't see seat people in those seats you know and and it happens man the game's way you got to wait in line longer to pee and the game's way louder when everybody comes <laughs> okay so just to um Clarify, I just checked out the, the NHL Stanley Cup playoff schedule. Saturday's game one, Monday's game two, Thursday, June 8th is game three, Saturday, June 10th is game four. If we need them, Tuesday, June 13th is game five. Uh, I guess that's Thursday, June 16th is game six, and Sunday, June 19th, game seven, if it goes that far. Every game is at uh, eight o'clock Eastern, seven o'clock Central. There you go. That's awesome. Because it's a cookie cutter world. Yeah, we could. So we could be here on June twentieth, dashing it up, chopping it up, and if it goes to seven, or we could be here as early as June eleventh. That's not gonna happen. Wow. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna happen either. No, that's the day I'm coming back from Detroit. I'm pretty sure that won't be the case. Well, that's a four game. That'd be four games. So that ain't happening for sure. Yeah. There's no chance this is going for. I don't care how on fire Kachuk is. I don't care how far Imagine if fire it does, Bob though. is. I don't care how big that defense is in Vegas. I don't care. Aiden Hill, I mean, he's not a fluke, but no. we'll, we'll see. the truth will be told in the fall. The truck's going to steal at least one game. That, that, I mean, that come on. Oh, for sure. For sure. And Bob's going to for sure steal one. So I mean, it, it's it's for sure going at least six, seven games, no matter what, in my opinion. Just a I quick agree. little Google search: the last time there's been a sweep in the NHL Stanley Cup Playoff Finals, Detroit the Red Wings swept the Capitals. The Craps, yeah, in nine, nineteen in the summer of '98. So there's something we can chew on for there. That's 25 years ago. Stars pushed them to Game Six. 
Damn. In the Western Conference Final, Langenbrunner scored from center ice. No, no, that was the year before. No, that was that year. Was that it? was the, the year. The year after, it was 98. Okay. Yeah, that was that year for sure. The whole Mike Ward <clears throat> story, seeing the dudes in Detroit. I was working in Detroit when they cleaned out their lockers. And I ran into John Wharton after talking shit to him at our arena. This is all part of the PB and J show. <laughs> we did Timmy. I did uh, as a stagehand. I did the Campbell's uh, Champions on Ice the night before Game Five, and nice. uh, we. Uh, I had moved the day before that, and B was in town, and so I do the gig, and then we go to go to the game the next morning. We're driving down to my old place to clean out. Clean the, you know, pick up the last parts of my stuff. And my buddy Tom, who I split tickets from, calls up and he's like super congested. He's like, I can't go to the game tonight. You're going to have to find somebody that wants to go. And I was like, B, you want to go to the game tonight? And he's like, playoff hockey? Fuck yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? he's, like, he's like, he nearly jumped out of the, I was driving that little Nissan pickup then. He nearly jumped out the window. He was so happy. And, and that was the game when Langenbrunner scored from center ice on Osgood. Oh, man. And it was just a dump. And it and it Anheuser and it Anheuser again and Osgood stuck his stick out and directed it right in the net. And I'm gonna tell you, dude, one of my top three all times as a fan hockey moments for sure. And I can only imagine. And dude, like just crazy. And then fast forward two weeks, like they went and played the Caps and just knocked them out in four straight games. And then two weeks later, I'm up in uh, in Michigan, and I'm gonna go play the Great Lakes Open. Like the or no, actually in flight was the weekend after that. So I was working in Detroit. I had a full week of work. And then Mark Ellis gave me a ride up to Lansing and I met up with B and those guys. But I'm in the, we're doing load in on Wednesday. Same gig, I used to do this Benny Hinn gig all the time. And I'm like started noticing these guys in the, in the the on the floor and in the arena that didn't belong. Cause I mean, I've been doing that gig for like five or six years. And I knew all the people that would be around and like, it was a church gig. So there's lots of church people, but I knew all of them. None of them would be there. None of the, all of the production people would be there, but they were a bunch from the church too. And I was like, holy shit, wait a minute. I think these are Red Wings players. And then I go around the corner to go to the bathroom and there's their equipment manager, John Morton, the guy that I met. We had blocked all the truck doors with all that Campbell suit gear on loadout. And so he comes in the building, but his, he had two, two bags of hockey or two hand trucks of hockey gear sitting outside and we had blocked all the doors so he couldn't get in. So he's kind of sitting there. And, you know, we're, we're kind of scraggly stagehands and shit. And he starts kind of, I was like, oh, I go, you work for the Red Wings? And he goes, yeah. He goes, we're going to take biz- care of business in here tomorrow night. And I was like, no, you're not, dude. And it's all concrete. And I start yelling, <laughs> just like bavooming my voice at him and shit. <laughs> and just start talking shit, right? But being cool, totally being cool. Because, like, I'm at work. I'm not getting in trouble for being a dumbass. And somebody else is at work at the building. And, not. and you know, we just had fun with it. And in the end, we shook hands and. And uh, and then all that shit happened. Well, so I run into him in Detroit, and at the at the gig there, and I go, "What do you got? What's up, dude?" And he goes, "Oh, we're cleaning out lockers. You know, this is a this is like exit interview day." And and I was like, "I thought those were all players. You know, I I, I mean, it's it's hard to notice them if you don't watch them all year. You certainly aren't going to recognize them without a helmet. But like, I saw them enough in the playoffs. I was like, "Oh shit, that's got to be so and so and so and so." You know, and, and um, and so then he goes. He goes, what are you doing here? And I was like, same thing. You know, we met when I was working last time. I said, I'm working on this production here. And he goes, oh, all right, that's cool. And I said, well, I go, so, hey, let's talk about one more thing. And he goes, what's that? And I go, I go, how about that shot by Langenbrunner from Greek Town? He's like, we're not talking about that, dude. We're not going to talk about that at all. And I was just like, yeah, we are, dude. We're talking about that. Right now we're talking about it. And I was like, all right, I'll, I'll back off and I'll give you congratulations. And I go, but you got to tell me, I mean, how the hell did you guys put it on the caps like that? You know, and because the caps weren't slash, slouches, but that was long before Ovechkin. You know, I mean, oh, it was, oh, yeah. uh, oh, yeah. that was what was that was ninety eight. So and he they goes, had well, Ole he goes, the goalie and Phil Housley. Yeah, and he goes, he goes. Everybody in the league knew that the that the the cup was going through Dallas one way or another this year, and he said, and once once y'all lost Madano and Newendike to Brian Marchment. Everybody else, you know, everybody, it was just, it was a foregone conclusion that we were going to get out of there, you know? Yeah. And so that was pretty cool. It was really, really, really fun experience, you know, to get a chance. And that dude still works for him. I, every now and then I'll see it. 
I'll see a game and I can see his bald head. And then sometimes they'll even mention it. 25 yeah, so years later. Pretty cool. Jesus. Wow. I actually played against Jamie Langenbrunner. He's from a little town called Cloquet, Minnesota. Oh, nice. So back in my day, I played against Langenbrunner. He was cool. So, yeah. I liked having him on the team back then, for sure. Absolutely. So when so when he hit that goal and whatnot, I remember because I was like, I, I played against that guy. It was awesome. <laughs> that was so damn cool. And we, our my seats at the time were on the last row, but they were behind the home goalie. They were behind Belfour back then. So, I mean, we were looking right over his shoulder. You know, we had, there was nothing in our view. It was just like, it was, it was all of that. That's crazy. That's awesome. like, how, how did he not stop that? What? Because like, yeah, it was when crazy. you see something and replayed multiple times in slow motion, then you go, oh yeah, he directed it behind his back. But at the time we're like, what kind of wizardry is this? Like, how did like, this happen? Like, is there a hole in his stick? I mean, what the hell did he? And honestly, <laughs> I didn't realize that it, that he had really touched it until, you know, we got home and we watched the replay because we were both in disbelief. It was like, what the, what, what? We were there watching it, yeah. And I mean, we were like, like crazy John Brooks used to say, yeah, I'm holding it together with bailing wire and duct tape, you know, and, and our play, <laughs> our team was that, you know, I mean, a hundred percent. That's awesome. Well, so I guess uh, let's meet up after this, whether it's four or five, six or seven games and just do a little one more wrap up and then we'll really sincerely look forward to having you for another full hour of just you and less of us. And um, maybe, you know, we'll get into one quarter of the stories you possibly have to tell. We can come to this. <laughs> That'd be awesome. I, I look forward to it and uh, yeah, just really enjoy the games. I mean, yeah. obviously all three of us are big time hockey fans, oh, but man. this is what it's all about. The finals. Are you kidding me? I'd have been That's watching all this if my team wasn't in it. I guarantee you I'd have been oh, watching absolutely. all of this absolutely. if my team wasn't in it. I mean, like, I think I showed it when I talked about the first round about watching a, watching a game on the TV and a game of streaming on the computer at the same time, and then going <laughs> to the other two games, you know, so yep. getting it for a night. I mean, it's like, I learned that from basketball, you know, college ball, watch a ton of games in March, you know, Yep. Yeah, it's, it's really awesome. that's when this shit started. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Timmy, you, my friend, you have yourself an excellent evening. And um, from your perspective, go Florida, go. That's cool. Let's go. Have a good night, fellas. Thank you again. <laughs> All right, talk again. to you later, bro. Much appreciated, Peace. buddy. You staying on, B? Yeah. All right, let me kill live. Uh, of information. Uh-oh.